All right, back on the Young Turks. One other quick uh, thing about Glenn Beck. Uh, I'm amused by this. Uh, there's a, a blog uh, called Maine Refounders, and they're giving people a visitor's guide uh, for the folks coming in for the Glenn Beck rally this weekend uh, in D.C. Remember, he's doing it on hallowed ground where... <laughs> I love that statement, as you could tell, uh, where Martin Luther King uh, did his I Have a Dream speech, and he, uh, he's doing it on its anniversary, and he's saying, what, what, what? That was just a coincidence, right? And he says he's going to reclaim the civil rights movement. The guy did this on the Ed Show, but really, Jared, can you figure out who's he, who he's reclaiming the civil rights movement from? <laughs> I mean, who could it be, right? <laughs> because the civil rights movement ha- should have been for white people. <laughs> Conservative white folks that watch Fox News. That's who he should have been for, so he's reclaiming it. Okay, not, not above stealing anything. So, now, this isn't Glenn Beck. It's not his group. It's a blog, like I told you. But it's just a little funny. They're telling people, hey, here's where you can go, here's where you can't go. Uh, restaurants, uh, these restaurants are good, bad, no problems, etc. Then they tell people about the subway. They say, and in one portion of it, they say, do not use the green line or the yellow line. These uh, rules are even more important at night. Can you uh, figure out, by the way, where the green line and the yellow line go? The subway in D.C.? They say, there's, of course, nothing wrong with many other areas, but you don't know where you are, so you should not explore them. (laughs) All right, I'll leave it up to you to go look at where the green and the yellow line in D.C. go. (laughs) Anybody want to take a guess? (laughs) Well, to be fair to them, they also did warn people. Hey, they said, if you go out to Arlington, right, which is uh, overwhelmingly white, right, they say, that's a lovely place, but be warned, there are a lot of liberals there. (laughs) They should get that warning. Uh, Here, I got a warning for you. So you can run and tell that, homeboy. (laughs) That just got on my sound machine, so I was excited to use it. Not quite the right fit, but hey, work with me. All right, now... um, Look, we, this 9-11 mosque, see, like, look, Glenn Beck put it in my head. You see that, for, that slip I just said? And I've got to stop calling it a mosque, okay? It's a 15-story cultural center. There's basketball courts, there's this, there's that, there's movie theaters. They're trying to bring everybody in. There's a mosque on one of the floors, okay? So let me restart that. The... Islam, but on the other hand, I feel goofy calling it this, like as if I'm trying too hard to go the other way. But I should be accurate. The Islamic Cultural Center in Lower Manhattan, two and a half blocks from Ground Zero, obviously in the news, we can't get rid of it. Everybody's talking about it. Now there's rallies. And Sunday there was a rally against the mosque. There was one in favor of the mosque. And we have interesting video that was on CitizenTube of YouTube shot by uh, someone in the area, and I'll give you his exact name, actually. It was Aaron Weber. He's 32. He's a graphic designer, but he went down there and shot it and wound up putting it up on YouTube. And it shows an interesting interaction where uh, a black guy goes into the crowd that's anti-mosque and gets a a rude uh, welcome. Now, sometimes it's a little hard to hear here, so what I'm going to come back, uh, and I listened to it several times, I'm going to tell you exactly what they said after we watched the video. But in the beginning, you have to know that they are chanting, no, no mosque here, no mosque here. And then you'll see uh, the black guy walk into it, and I'll tell you who he is after the video as well. All right, so let's watch. I don't want to. 
All right, now you see, look, to be fair to the crown, that, that guy with a baseball came, cap came and uh, cooled things down a little bit, and he was with the rally. Okay, so that's good. Now, let me tell you the other things that were said. All right, first, as you know, the chant is no mosque here. They said it in the beginning, they said it in the middle. But <laughs> what the African American gentleman says, and his name is Kenny, by the way, we'll, we'll find out later. So, what Kenny says is, first, what the fuck are you yelling at me for? <laughs> right? Then he says, uh, quote, all you dumb motherfuckers don't even know my opinion on shit. <laughs> okay. Now, look, this is very relevant because he came into the crowd. He didn't say I'm pro-Muslim. He didn't say I'm pro-mosque. He didn't say anything. They just started yelling at him. Based on what? He's black, and it looks like he's wearing a skull cap. So I'll give the crowd that, too. Like, maybe they thought, oh, he's wearing a Muslim skull cap. But who knows? You could... It could be anything, right? I mean, it didn't look like a Muslim skull cap. I looked at it. It looked like maybe it was Under Armour. It said Under Armour on the front. Right, Under Armour, right? Yeah. He looks, yeah. like, looks like a football coach. <laughs> <laughs> Muslims don't wear Under Armour for, as a Muslim skull cap. They don't, okay? But they're like, oh, black guy. He's got something on his head, right? And here's what uh, one of the guys in the crowd yelled after he said, you don't even know my opinion. He said, oh, yeah, run away, coward. Well, he wasn't running away. He didn't run anywhere. He didn't say anything, right? And then uh, Kenny says, S somebody want to know about me, ask me my opinion, my beliefs. He just keeps saying, you don't even know what, why I'm here. Turns out Kenny's a construction worker, works, works near ground zero, okay? So I'm going to get back to that in a second. He says, look, quote, I'm not even Muslim, but I got my beliefs about this mosque. But that's it. Finally, at 40 seconds, in, says, I got my beliefs about this mosque. He still doesn't say what they are. I don't know. I, I guess that he's for the mosque. But I, I, to this day, I don't know, right? All he said is, I got my beliefs about it. Nobody even asked him what they were. And then uh, at my, almost my favorite part of this was at the end there, you hear somebody from the crowd yelling out, yo, we're against the Muslims, not against each other. So that's their way of trying to cool the situation down. Like, don't yell at this guy. Let's find Muslims to yell at. Are they not merciful? Okay, now there's a second part of this. He, he, gets, he walks out. He doesn't want to cause a mess, right? He's not trying to find trouble. And it's some people from the rally, it might be theories that the guy in a suit is an off-duty cop. He's talk, they're talking him down. They say, hey, look, you know what? And he says, I got my First Amendment rights. And the guy says, yeah. But he decides, all right, you know what? It's not worth it. He's going to leave. But there's one more little interaction before that. Again, I'll translate for you after you watch the video. Absolutely nothing happened. Muhammad's a pig. Muhammad's a pig. Look, he's a pig. Don't even say that. Hey, yeah, you don't need to do that. I was an enemy of some sort. You know, always got to be open. Didn't ask my opinion. Didn't ask who I was. I want no trouble. Wanted no trouble. Actually, actually, all the way up. All right, at the end, the very last part, you can't hear what he says after he says, although I'm not Muslim. And I'm like, I, I really want to know what he thinks, but nobody will actually ask him, right? So he, he said in the meeting there, look, absolutely nothing happened. And then some guy in the crowd is yelling, Muhammad's a pig, Muhammad's a pig. And the organizers of this rally and of this movement tell us, no, it's not against Islam. It's not against all Muslims. It's just against uh, Muslim radicals. And so you say Muhammad's a pig and you insult one and a half billion Muslims? That makes sense to you. All right. And then what Kenny said there at the end was, look, quote, they thought I was an enemy of some sort. Didn't ask my opinion. Didn't ask who I was. I don't want no trouble. Actually, although I'm not a Muslim. And then he gets cut off and you can't hear it. Right? Uh, all right, so then they, it, the guy who shot this video, Aaron Weber, catches up with Kenny, and he says, hey, what would you think of what happened here? Says, and he, Kenny's very calm, and he says, the guy who confronted him with the construction hat, he says, quote, the crazy thing is, this guy, this guy probably works at Ground Zero. I probably work with this guy. But he comes in, and he's a black guy, and he's wearing a skull cap that only, you can see on almost any football field in America, by word worn by white people, black people, Christians, I suppose Muslims too. Okay, 
and he gets this kind of treatment, and by the end you still don't know what he thinks about the mosque. Come on now, we gotta be better than this, we gotta be better. Now, uh, Weber, uh, as he shot the video, also noticed other chants, other signs. He said uh, to Salam magazine, quote, I got the distinct impression that this rally transcended the anti-Moss sentiment. It was, in fact, very anti-Islam. One guy had a sign that said, Islam equals slavery. When Weber asked that guy if he was serious, the man replied, quote, it's an evil cult and America must destroy it. America must destroy it. Remember, the logic is, the Muslims are trying to destroy us. The, as somewhere along the line, Muslim radicals, so-called. Somewhere along the line, that all got wiped out and forgotten, and the guys at the rally say, we have to destroy Islam. And then the people who started up all this fervor go, what, 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 what do you mean? Oh, of course we're in favor of Muslims overall. I don't know where you got that crazy idea in your head. Oh, we got all these people riled up to destroy Islam. Huh, who knew? And I saw anti-Islam signs in the rally as well, as did Weber, as did many others. And then uh, Associated Press went and talked to somebody. And now, of course, all of these people are not representative of everyone there. And as you saw, there were some cooler heads in the crowd. Uh, but here's someone else at the, uh, Kobe Moore at the rally. She said, if the mosque gets built, quote, we will bombard it. So, the answer is, this, and we've told you about Imam Rauf a hundred times, the model of moderate Islam, according to the Bush administration. Worked for the State Department under Bush, etc., etc. In fact, uh, it, Rauf has said in the past, I see the Article of Independence, the Declaration of Independence for the United States, as more compliant with the principles of Islam than what is available in many of the current Muslim countries. Meaning that America is so open to religious freedom that we have the ability to practice Islam better than Muslims in America do than they do in Muslim uh, countries. He's so pro-America, they think he might be an agent of America in uh, some Muslim countries. So he's reaching out in every way possible. And what do we get from the opponents? Well, if you build this mosque trying to reach out to us, we will bombard you. In the name of what happened on 9-11? You think that makes sense? Other than being profoundly ignorant, they obviously have no idea what the word irony means. All right, so that's uh, the rally over there. And the, now the third aspect of this, and I promise you after this we're done with it, is now they're trying to connect, of course, Obama to Islam so then they can get all these people riled up. And, you know, you got Franklin Graham out there talking about how Obama is the seat of Islam, et cetera, et cetera. So then they asked Mitch McConnell on Meet the Press, uh, is Obama Muslim? I mean, where did people get this crazy idea, right? Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republicans, says, quote, the president says he's a Christian. I take him at his word. Now, what the hell does that mean? That means I want to give you an answer that's purposely vague and confusing. So the people will say, oh, Mitch McConnell doesn't really, he can't say it, he can't say it, but he knows that President Obama is pretending to be Christian. Oh, I take him at his word. That's despicable, man. That is so obvious. No, 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 the correct answer is, President Obama is a Christian. End of the question. Okay, next question. Not, I take him at his, if that's what he says, I guess. All right, you know what, two can play that game. You know, uh, I don't think Senator McConnell is a child molester. I, I take him at his word when he says he's not. Right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with the way of phrasing that, right? Republicans agree. There's nothing wrong with saying that. I mean, if Mitch McConnell says he's not a child molester, I take him at his word. Gee, I wonder how to get people riled up. Can't quite figure it out. All right, when we come back, let's talk uh, the economy a little bit. Uh, some very interesting numbers, including on Republicans who are against tax cuts, which apparently is the majority of them. Interesting. We'll show you. Young Turks. All right, back on the Young Turks. Now, we've been talking about these Bush tax cuts because they're coming up now for renewal. Should we renew them or not? Now, if we do, and now they're tax cuts for all the different brackets. Overall, it would cost our budget over the next 10 years $3.1 trillion. Me, personally, I don't think they should be renewed. Okay, I don't think they should be renewed for the richest people in the country, but I don't think they should be renewed for any of us, to be honest, because we have a terrible deficit situation, and I'm an actual deficit hawk. 
unlike the pretend ones you see on television. Okay. Now, when they asked liberals, moderates, and Republicans, though, uh, about that, they found some very surprising answers. First, they asked, "Hey, do you think the tax cuts for the top brackets, the top two percent uh, of the the wealthiest people in the country, should they be renewed?" So here's what they found: that it is a CNN uh, uh, study, by the way. Nine percent of liberals said that they favor tax cuts for the rich, which is not surprising. Liberals are generally against tax cuts for the rich, but nine percent, maybe the ones that are limousine liberals, were like, "Yeah, not such a good idea." Who knows, right? Now, 26 percent of moderates said that they favor it. So overwhelmingly, moderates are against tax cuts for the rich. But look at that number: 50 percent of Republicans said, "Yeah, let's give tax cuts for the rich," but 50 percent said, "Hell no, let's not give tax cuts for the rich. Let's not renew those." That is much larger than people would suspect. So you got fully half of the Republican Party, not the politicians, the actual voters, saying, "No, let's not renew the tax cuts for the rich." Here's an interesting twist, though. When they asked, "Hey, how about tax cuts for everyone else? Should that be renewed?" Let's look at that. Liberals said 69% of them said yes. Tax cuts for everyone else should be renewed. 53% of moderates said they should be renewed. But look at this: 36% of Republicans said uh, that they should be renewed, meaning a great majority think they should not be renewed. So you look that leads to a couple of different uh, conclusions. First of all. The, you can argue that the Republicans are being the, the voters themselves are being principled, saying, "Hey, you know what? It's going to screw up the deficit either way, and so I don't want those tax cuts to ruin our fiscal problems and and our budget." Right? I, I think that's a very legitimate interpretation, and I give them credit for that. Now, of course, you can look at it and say, "Wait a minute! More Republicans favor tax cuts for the rich than they do for everyone else." Okay, that's fair too. But overall. What turns conventional wisdom on its head is that a majority of Republicans don't want tax cuts for anybody. A, a, a majority say no tax cuts for the 98 percent of us, and half, exactly half, say no tax cuts for the rich. So the, all this idea of oh, Republicans want tax cuts, Republicans want tax cuts, but if you actually ask the Republican voters, they say no, we don't. We want, we would rather balance the budget. Look at this: Republicans support of tax cuts for the rich. It's only 50 percent. For everyone else, it's 36 percent. They don't want the tax cuts. How come nobody ever points that out? That's a very interesting finding. Look, the reason they don't want it, and again, going back and giving them credit here, and if that's the way they voted, which unfortunately they don't, they vote for Republican politicians who uh, stop at nothing to make sure that the rich get their tax cuts. But if the Republican voters got their way, I would be on their side. Look, I, I agree with them. That's the final result. I mean, I don't think we should get tax cuts for any of these people. Look, we're in a state where our budget is a disaster. To give away 3.1 trillion dollars, look, I think those Republican voters are saying we're not convinced that it's going to help the rich stimulate the economy, but we're not convinced that it's going to help stimulate the economy for the rest of us either. And generally speaking, I agree with them. And if you look at the numbers. And we've showed you these numbers in the past as to what stimulates the economy the most. It's things like unemployment benefits and food stamps because they get spent right away, so they have a larger multiplier on the economy. They positively affect the rest of the economy. If you give tax cuts, whether it's for the rich, which is has the worst multiplier, or for the rest of us, it still has a bad multiplier because a lot of people save their tax cuts, so it doesn't stimulate the economy. So the bottom line on this is twofold: one, Republican voters. Are not in favor of tax cuts, so stop saying that. And number two, I agree with the Republican voters. Now, number three, <laughs> the Republican politicians do not represent the Republican voters. Do I agree with the Republican politicians? Hell no, because they're on the exact opposite, saying we have to have the tax cuts no matter what. In fact, perfect example is Mitch McConnell on Meet the Press. David Gregory keeps asking him and asking him, putting him in a corner, right? And look at how he tries to weasel his way out, but he can't. Let's go to clip number two. If my question is, how do you pay for an extension of tax cuts? Because if you are concerned, as Republicans say they are, about cutting spending and the deficit, you have to acknowledge that tax cuts are net paid for. Well, what, 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 what are you talking about? Pay for this is existing tax policy. It's been in place for ten years. What they're talking about is raising taxes. Impacting 50 percent of small business income in the middle 
of what most Americans think is a recession. That is not a responsible thing to do, it's in still, my But it's still borrowed money. The CBO senator this week made it very clear that the long-term picture for the economy, for the deficit, is very dark if you extend the Bush-era tax cuts without somehow paying for them. Look, what we're talking about here is, is tax increases in the middle of a recession. We're going to have the third year in a row under this administration of an annual deficit of more than a trillion dollars. That is not because we are taxing too little, David. It's because we're spending too much. But, Senator, we with respect, you're being unresponsive to a question, which is, are tax cuts well, paid for going forward, or is it borrowed money at a time when you and other Republican leaders say we must get serious <laughs> about the deficit? It's a straightforward question. I, yeah, I know, and I, I gave you a straightforward answer. What we're talking about here is raising taxes in the middle of what most Americans think is a recession. That isn't going to produce more revenue. We've, we've got a serious job loss problem in this country. For a final time, I'll go back to my question, which is the extension of the tax cuts would cost $3.2 uh, $3 trillion. That's borrowed money. That adds to the deficit. Do you have a plan to pay for that extension? You're talking about current tax policy. Why did it all of a sudden be, uh, become something that we, quote, uh, uh, paid for? Oh, that's great, man. Did you catch that last part? He's like, all of a sudden, why do we have to pay for tax cuts for the rich? The current policy under Bush and then uh, the last couple of years under Obama is we don't pay for tax cuts for the rich. We just add that to the deficit and the, uh, and the debt. And eventually we turn around and go, oh, sorry, we spent all the money, and so we can't pay your Social Security. It's like, all of a sudden, why are you demanding we pay for it? By the way, you want to know the numbers? Uh, what David Gregory alluded to there? And by the way, very good job of asking follow-up questions by David Gregory. Gregory, that was, you know, challenging the government. That was nicely done, okay? Now, uh, by 2014, um, right now our deficit is $1.342 uh, trillion, right? If we do not extend the Bush tax cuts for anybody, the budget uh, deficit by 2014, in four years, will go down to $438 billion. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it's a trillion, almost a trillion dollars less than where we are now, and it would be a pretty manageable 2.5% of the GDP. Okay. Hey, I can live with that. I'd rather have it be balanced, but 2.5% of the GDP is workable. Okay? So that's why I'm not in favor of extending the tax cuts for anybody. Okay? Now, if you do what the Republicans want, and you extend the tax cuts for everybody, including the richest Americans, and you get rid of the estate taxes they want. The estate tax over the next 10 years, if we got rid of it, would also cost the budget $262 billion. You put that together, you know what it would do? It would about double our deficit. It would double our deficit. And these guys pretend that they want balanced budgets. Do you understand what's going on here? They are unremittent liars. Gregory did a very good job there of putting them in a corner and saying, what is it? Are you gonna, it's going to raise a deficit, isn't it? It's going to raise a deficit, isn't it? You're not paying for it, are you? And he says, oh, no, no, come on, you're being silly. Why would I pay for tax cuts for the rich? I'm a Republican. Look, they're the richy rich party. That's what they are. And just everybody understand it. And if you're in the top 2%, you might want to vote for a Republican. If you're not, you got to get your head examined. Okay, I'm not done yet. Now, you think those are the Republicans that are terrible. No, I'm not letting the Democrats off the hook. So in the middle of this debate, which we have thoroughly won, what do you think is going to happen? Of course, Democrats bailing out. Running for office, uh, Robin Carnahan in Missouri, Jack Conway in Kentucky, all Democratic candidates, Brad Ellsworth in Indiana, and Charlie Mellencon in Louisiana, all Senate candidates, all Democrats, all saying we should extend tax cuts for the very rich and agreeing with the Republicans. But even the Republican voters don't think that. Why are you saying that? Only two possible reasons. One, you're getting the same money from those same rich folks. And so under the guise of, oh, I live in a red state, oh, I have to be more conservative, you just take their cash and then you sell out your voters. Or you're so profoundly stupid 
that you believe the Republican talking points that doesn't even represent the Republican voters, let alone all of the voters. It doesn't even come close to it. And you're so pathetic that you bowed your head without even knowing what the facts are. So I asked those Democrats, which one is it? Because I'm not sure. So you tell me, which one is it? One last fact, because I'm not done with them yet. Paul Krugman p points out something, an, a very interesting fact in his New York Times article uh, today, or actually a couple of days ago. Um, do you know how much the Bush tax cuts would give to the richest 120,000 people? Now look, these are the richest people in the country. It's not even 1%. So I think it's 1% of 1%, okay? Or 10% of 1%. So it's a small percentage of people, okay? So keep that in mind. Having said that, if we kept the Bush tax cuts for the richest people in the country, the top 120,000 uh, incomes in the country would save on average $3 million. $3 million on average per household for the richest 120,000 people in the country. Now, how does that make any sense? You think that's going to stimulate the economy by giving the richest people in the country, on average, an extra $3 million like they need it? And when it has the worst multiplier for the economy, it has, does the worst job of stimulating the economy. And by the way, that's how the economy crashed in the first place, all these tax cuts for the rich. This is insanity, man. We can't have this anymore. All right, Young Turks. All right, back on the Young Turks. Um, I'm going to thank a couple of members first. Uh, I'm going to go with Captain Augustus Waiters. Come on, how badass name is that? He can relate to me naming my kid uh, Prometheus Maximus. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Augustus, you can tell me if it turned out that was a good idea or a bad idea because you've already lived it. Right. Um, you know what name has grown on me lately? You know, we got a, okay, cutie baby story of the day. Shwang, wang, wang, wang. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a million nicknames for him, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I, I got this um, orange and black shirt for him, and then if I dress him in that, I call him Princeton. Okay. <laughs> and it, whatever, a million nicknames. But lately, the name that's grown on me is Maximus. Oh, really? His middle name is pretty badass. Yeah. You know? But anyways, so when I got home from New York, uh, oh, it was the whole weekend. I'm like squishing him. And, do, 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 and we went, took him out a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I rolled him around in the grass a little bit because I don't want him getting allergies. That's my theory. Have you seen the photo of Wendy and Pro wearing matching shirts? Uh, yeah. That's the cutest picture ever. Ever. <laughs> I love that picture. Hey, you know what happened? All right, last thing, last thing. Uh, I, I got so caught up and catching up with my family over the weekend that I only worked like four or five hours on the weekend. Oh, my, unorthodox. <laughs> okay. How dare you? <laughs> so it actually probably was longer than that, but, but like much shorter than I normally do. And today I'm overwhelmed. It's disastrous mm -hmm. how much work I have to do. So turns out hanging out with the family, not that great an idea. No, no, it's a great idea, great idea. Anyway, uh, one more captain. Captain Tim Gerke, the captains, colonels, lieutenants, etc., helped the show a tremendous amount. We love you guys. Thanks for helping out. And of course, you know, everybody knows, right? Uh, if you are a member of the Young Turks, get the whole three hours, commercial free, podcast it, do anything you like with it. You also get What the Flick and every other show that we produce. More of that is coming up, but that we're going to have to tell you about later. Okay, we've got new uh, announcements later in the week. Well, we do? Oh, yeah, yeah. There'll be a lot of this. Let me see. But we'll save that for later in the week. All right. Now, uh, we couldn't get the video to work, okay? Uh, it had a gl glitch. It's not us. It's them. Right. It had a glitch in it. Uh, so, but what happened in the nail salon? All right. So, I'm going to reset it. <laughs> All right. So, a woman by the name of Michelle Fonville goes to a nail salon in Georgia, and she sits on their special spa pedicure chair, and she gets her manicure pedicure. And all of a sudden, she gets her bill, and she notices that she's been charged five extra dollars. So she thought, maybe this is an error. Let me ask them about it. She asked the uh, nail salon owner about it, and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, are, we charge you an extra five dollars because you're overweight. What, what does that have to do with the nail salon? They claim that since she's overweight, when she sits on their special nail salon chairs, she risks damaging it. 
Oh, okay. hell no. I know. I, uh, this, hell no. This story is so outrageous, okay? So outrageous. So the woman's like, you can't charge me five extra dollars. That's discrimination. And she's like, you can't discriminate against me because I'm fat. And then they're like, oh, okay, okay, fine. We'll, we'll, you don't have, we won't charge you the five dollars, but we don't want to see you back here again. They told her, we don't want to see you back here again. Hell no. Well, on that note, I'd say mission accomplished. Right, right, right. I but mean, if I'm coming back here, you don't want me coming back here. Exactly. But <laughs> still, like, the ball's on them to tell her, like, fine, we won't charge you the $5, but don't come back over here, you fat ass. Like, you know, it's and just... The thing that drives me crazy about this story is how flimsy the excuse is. Right. You damaged our chairs by being overweight. No, oh, no, no. But because then you can give that excuse anywhere. I go to a restaurant. Oh, no, no, your fat ass damaged my chair. I go there. I go to the movie theater. I go anywhere, right? And they're going to come out with, look, they're going to cause trouble, man. People are going to cause trouble with that kind of policies. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I'm going to be somewhat calm, okay? This lady was apparently, God bless her, harm didn't cause any trouble or anything, right? She didn't. She okay. left and. Right, God bless her. But one day, they're going to tell somebody that they were fat and damaged their chairs and charge them an extra five bucks and get themselves in a whole heap of trouble. Because they're going to come back, and it's not going to be pretty. Okay? They're going to come back with a couple of friends, a blowtorch, and a lead pipe. This story... Okay, I hope not. I hope not. But I'm saying, look, come on, man. This is so uh, unbelievably offensive. It is offensive, yes. And the story just gets worse. Because the local uh, media went and interviewed Kim Tran. She's the um, salon manager. And they asked her you know, why did you do this? This is unfair. And she's like, you think this is unfair? She's like, we charged her $24 for a manicure pedicure, but she's costing us $2,400 when she damages our chair. So is it fair for her to come in here and damage our chairs and have us pay $2,400? Like, they had absolutely no remorse, even with the media going over there and asking them about it. It's ridiculous. Let me get this right. She didn't break the chair, She right? did not break the chair. She did no damage, zero, zilch, nothing. <laughs> On the p potential that she might break her precious $2,400 chair, theoretically. My ass, they got $2,400 no, chairs in that salon, by the way. And look, I don't want to make a blanket statement about nail salons, but from my personal experience at several different salons in the San Fernando Valley, they're always oh, trying to, like, I feel like I always experience them trying to charge me extra money for things that I don't need or want. Like, I'll give you an example, and this is a personal example, okay? One time, I went in there to get my eyebrows waxed, because at nail salons, they do waxing, nails, everything. I wanted to get my eyebrows waxed, and the lady, I have no facial hair, like zero. The lady's like, you got a little, you know, you got whiskers going on. And I was like, no, I don't. She's like, you do, you do. And I was like, I don't want you to wax my face at all. Just do the eyebrows, that's it. She's like, ah, you got whiskers. And she waxed me. How are you going to wax her? How are you going to wax her? I was, I couldn't, and you don't want to be rude, and you don't want to cause a scene, so I'm just like, what? Okay, okay, go ahead, you know? But it, not cool. Anyway, we got a video. Angela Johnson, she's a comedian, okay? And she did a skit about nail salons, just to show you that I'm not the only person who's experienced this. No, no. Okay? Okay, this is a common thing. I love this skit. Let's go to it. Hang out with my family a lot. Hang out with my sister. We go get our nails done. Any ladies in here get your nails done? Nice. On this crowd, how about any guys? Any guys down for Manny Petty? Don't lie. Sir, don't lie. Don't lie. I can see your nail polish gleaming in the lights right now. Don't lie. It's all sparkly. You take him with you, huh? Yeah, see? She ratted you out, dude. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, me and my sister, we go over. Um, it's a place called Beautiful Nail. I was kind of confused when I first read the sign, though. Beautiful Nail. Just one. <laughs> Just one nail. Do I get to pick which one? Or no. Now with these ladies, they're so nice. You know, they make you feel like it's all about you and customer service, you know. Whatever you lie, we do for you. <laughs> yeah. Really nice, yeah. As soon as I walk in, they greet me right away. Hi honey, what you need today? <laughs> Can I get my nails done? Okay, honey, do you lie pedicure too? Uh, no, no, just my nails. Honey, why you don't lie? <laughs> pedicure, it may look nice, it's so sexy. It's better for you. 
Oh, oh, all right, sure, then I'll get a pedicure too, thanks. Okay, honey, sit down, I'm a sick my ling, she do for you, good job, only $20 month, that's okay, sit down. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. So my ling starts doing my nails right away. Um, by the way, her American name is Tammy. <laughs> Tammy. <laughs> you have boyfriend? No, no, I don't, I don't have a boyfriend. Honey, why you don't have? You look so pretty, like model, cheerleader, something pretty. You like long or short nails? Uh, short nails, please, thanks. Oh, honey, that's why you don't have a boyfriend. I do for you, long better. All right, fine, I'll have long nails, thanks. It's okay, honey, only $4 more, that's okay. All right, so you get the point. I mean, it keeps going on, and there's one point where they ask her, like, you know, for something ridiculous. I think it's, like, something called crystal gel. And she's like, no, I don't want that, I don't want that. And they're like, no, 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 you want it, because if you don't, you're not going to get a boyfriend, you're going to be ugly, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, fine. She ends up with, like, a $60 mani-pedi bill. Like, right. it's just... You go through this. Right, I hear you. The flip side is, that was just one long Asian accent joke, okay? <laughs> and as the father of a half-Chinese son, oh, please. okay, I denounce and reject that and find it completely offensive. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Okay, no, it was pretty funny, and her accent was excellent. All right, All right now, uh, I have two more nail salon stories, because apparently it's taken over the show. They're not <laughs> nail salon. One of them, uh, one's nail salon, and you don't want to miss that one. Uh -huh. But first, I went to go get my haircut last time at Supercuts, as usual, mm -hmm. right? It's now up to 16 bucks in L.A. I'm like, what part of this is Supercuts? I thought this thing was supposed to be cheap. Anyway, everybody knows what you're going to do, right? you got to tip, right? So normally I used to tip 3 bucks when it was like 14 bucks, right? But if I tip 3 bucks, I'm the world's biggest asshole, right? What are you going to do? No, I want my buck back. Like, you give me 20 No, 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 give me the dollar back, right? No, so now i got to tip 4 bucks, right? So everybody understands this, right? So, but I had to do it with a credit card this time. So they say 16 bucks. They said, do you want to add a tip? I said, yeah, yeah, let's make it 20 right? Mm -hmm. So they did that. And she comes back, thirty-six dollars. What? I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Well, what? What happened? And she said, uh, "You want boyfriend?" No. She, <laughs> she said, sixteen, and you said twenty dollar tip, right? I said, "Oh no, no, fuck no! I didn't say twenty dollar tip. I said, oh make my it, god, I said make why? it twenty overall, four dollar tip." And then she's like, "All right, I'm gonna need a correction here. This guy wants less tip. I'm gonna put less tip on the credit card." I'm like, "Oh, for Christ's sake, you know." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, but you know me, I, I'm not budging on that, man. I'm no, like, look. that's insane. I'm like, like look, I thought four was generous, but I ain't giving to 20. I ain't that generous. <laughs> okay. For them to even assume that you meant an additional $20 for a $16 haircut is insane. It took them 20 minutes to undo that credit card thing. Oh, God. Okay, they had to pull in like two, three different people. They're like, okay, Susie, come here. This guy with less tip over here. <laughs> hey, Sal, that didn't work. Sally, come here, come here. This guy wants to give less tip. We got to undo it. All right, now, nail salon story. Mm -hmm. I, it didn't happen to me. It happened to a friend of mine in New York. Turns out, some of the nail salons in your, New York, I hope you're sitting, are also chop shops upstairs. What does that mean? Do you know what a chop shop is? No. Okay, that's kind of partly I made up that term. Uh, you know, a wax shop. What? Hand release. Oh. Okay, uh -huh. so it's a full-service nail salon. Oh, you're going for manicure, pedicure. Oh, you're about to, why, you have no girlfriend? You want to go upstairs? Oh, my God. I mean, you want to talk about upselling you, right? <laughs> okay? They upsell yourselves upstairs. I, that blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I was, that happened like maybe 10 years ago or something. I don't know if it still exists. And I was like, come again? All of a sudden, I'm like, hey, do I need a manicure? <laughs> I'm playing. But, God, that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. it I, I didn't know that. I've never been to a uh, nail salon, a full-service nail salon with a chop <laughs> shop upstairs. <laughs> I think I made that term up, but I'm not sure. But it sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, that's that. I, I, we couldn't possibly do any more nail salon stories. We've done them all. So, let's move on to the next thing. We have. We have. Okay. Uh, St. Vincent's Episcopal Church in Texas denied a potential student because her parents are lesbians. Okay. Well, uh, obviously. Yeah. Now, of course, this is a privately funded school. And mm -hmm. we know what our uh, standing is on this situation. It's not a public school. It's a private 
right-wing school. If right. they don't like your lesbian parents, then they have a right to deny you admission. Right, and they had filled out the form, and they called, They had mother, they filled out mother, and then there was a father, and they crossed out father and put in mother, and it was Tracy, right? Right. And they, the administrators still weren't sure. They're like, Tracy could be a dude. Maybe this is like some weird situation going on. But then when the parents came over, and they were two women, they were like, mm -hmm. They're like, we got lesbians in the house, we got lesbians in the house. So all the guys come and check it out. And then afterwards, they're like, oh, no, 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 we can't have it. And they say, oh, by the way, your kid, out. Gone. Okay. So, uh, O-V-A-H, OVA. Okay, so the kid can't go to the school. Right. Now, look, as Anna said, outrageous. We're totally against it. It's a private school. Now, somebody's going to come up with an argument, but that private school takes X from the government or it uses government sidewalk, et cetera. No, overall, I'm not buying it. If it's private, it gets to set, set its own rules. It could also say, hey, you know what? We don't like parents that are cross-eyed. Freaks us out. We don't know which eye to look at, right? So they could ban them. In this case, they ban the lesbians. You don't like that? Don't send your kids there. Mm -hmm. I probably, I don't think I'd send my kids there. I'd exactly. be shocked if I sent my kids there. God knows what they're going to think of me if they don't like lesbian parents, right? Yeah. But they have, it's, but it's a free country. It is a free country. Besides which, you don't want your child to go to a school that has like discriminative, you know, practices like this. I definitely wouldn't want to deal with that. So right, and they claim, oh no, no, if they were parents living outside of marriage, would bust their ass up too. Right. Right, 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 right. Now don't don't make me bring out the shrimp. <laughs> okay. And they say, oh, we're Christian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sure if at the barbecue they catch you eating shrimp, they're like, you what? You, 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 you white moron. That's random. <laughs> okay, and they're like, you, out, you're gone. That's in the, against the Bible. We can't have any shrimp eaters in here. Go. Of course, they're not going to do that. But that's life. What are you going to do? Just don't go to that school. It's called... Uh, St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Okay, so you know what? TYT bans you, St. Vincent. How you like them apples? Also a free country. We get to do that. Mm -hmm. mm, works both ways. All right. Uh, we got to do this story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come okay, on. Okay, so Bill O'Reilly uh, has blasted Kim Kardashian. He's blasted her. He's so funny. And he's such an old funny daddy. Like, he's, he's hilarious. slash totally full of crap. I know. I know there's a way that Bill would like to blast Kim Kardashian. So spare me the fake outrage. But let's watch it anyway because we're going to have fun. Okay. Real quickly, uh, there's some pictures of Justin Bieber, 16 years old, with Kim Kardashian, who I guess is 42, I don't know. 29. Uh, 29. 29. Uh, put the pictures up, please, on the screen. Okay. Now, th this is a magazine spread that's reminiscent of The Graduate, where Anne Bancroft and Dustin, young Dustin Hoffman at the time, they had this little thing. All right. I don't care about this. Justin Bieber, he looks like Ringo Starr to me. I don't know the other one. She's in the water with a dress. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, 20 seconds, Hoover. <laughs> does this bother you at all? No, he's eating a flower. He's a prepubescent Ringo Starr. He? He's eating a flower. Is like, he a what bee is that? or what is he? What is that? No, look, I mean, clearly I'm not a tween enough. That do you I'm care about, about this? Does it mean I do. anything? I actually, I think it's gross. Because it's, gross. it's like a prepubescent 16-year-old having an affair with a celebutant who is famous for doing nothing, nothing other right. than so being famous. You took a except there might have been a sex. Offense? I didn't take offense of it. I mean, it's every 16-year-old male's dream to have... I wanted to be a baseball player. I didn't want to hang around with Kim Kardashian, oh, but not into, everyone. You weren't into women at 16 uh, No, I wasn't. I had a baseball glove and a bat and ice skates. Oh, All right, that's what I was doing. I will tell you this. If a 16-year-old girl was pictured with a 29-year-old man in any of that, they'd be in big trouble. Yeah. Agree? Game over. Yeah. Well, Kim okay. Kardashian Agreed? did Game take over. her. Agreed. It's game they, over. They're both in trouble for it. They got flack for this. Oh, they did? Yes. Okay. Do they know it? No, no, they have no, no idea. idea. All they care about is... All right, everybody, the culture warriors. Culture warriors. Uh, this guy, I love this guy, man. I, this guy cracks me up. Cultural warriors. Okay. Oh, my God. How, he got... He was so full of crap in 18 different... different actually, it started leaking out of his ear. Okay. So, now, let's understand this right. A 16-year-old boy, you had no interest in women. You didn't look at women. Well, that would lead me to a different conclusion. Except I already know the interest you have in women. So I'm going to let you off the hook on that one, okay? Because we ha heard the tapes right. of you being like, oh, I want to rub that falafel all over you. And I want to loofah and da-da-da, and you're in the shower. I heard it all, Bill. Come on. Now this guy's going to, he does a segment on the culture warriors where he's the paragon of virtue. Right. He took a producer that was not interested in him at all, did not participate in the phone sex. 
and he's telling her how he'd like to get her in the shower and rub falafels on it. Okay, <laughs> and he got to tell us at 16 he had no inclination of doing anything other than playing baseball. But then the other part of it, uh, this Kim Kardashian, I don't know who she is. Right. Oh, oh, oh Bill. Oh, Bill -o. My ass, you don't know who she is. She's in the dress with the water. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I, I think you know what that means, and I think you took a look at those pictures earlier in the day. That's my guess, Bill -o. Okay. Look, if we hadn't heard the tapes, maybe you can go and pre do all this pretense, okay? But come on, Bill, we, we heard you. We heard you, man. Oh, then I get you in the shower. I think she was wet in the shower, too. <laughs> okay. Spare us, Bill. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, Young Turks.